best bites forever. Hi everyone, I'm Chef Alicia and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these really lovely little gingerbread cookies. I'm going to show you how to make them, bake them, as well as decorate them. Also, in this video I'm collaborating with 10 other YouTube channels. I'm not going to name them all, but I am going to leave a link to each of them down in the description below. All of them are making their own holiday treats, so please make sure that you go over and check out each of their channels. And make sure that you stay around until the end of this video because I have a special little freebie for you courtesy of Country Hill Cottages channel. And they are the ones who put this collaboration together. So please make sure you go over to their channel. They have some really cool crafts and recipes over there. And yeah, let's get started. I'm starting off here with four and three quarter cups of AP flour and I've added in one and a half teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, four teaspoons of ginger, two teaspoons of cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of cloves, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and I also like to give mine a little bit of spice with some black pepper, cayenne, and mace. Don't worry, all of those measurements are going to be in the description down below. Mix that together and set it over to the side. Here I have two sticks of butter and two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. So it's 16 tablespoons of butter and I'm going to cream those together until it looks like this. I'm going to stop and scrape my bowl, the bottoms and the sides every time I stop to scrape. And then I'm going to add in two whole eggs and I'm going to mix those in until it is looking like this. Now I am going to scrape my bowl again, bottom and the sides, and I'm going to start alternating in my dry ingredients with some molasses. So I put in one third of my flour mixture and I'm going to mix that until it is just barely mixed in. Stop, scrape my bowl, and stir in any flour that is left. Add in half of my molasses and I have two thirds of a cup altogether of molasses. I'm going to mix that in just until it's mixed in. And then I'm going to go back to my flour mixture doing the second one third right after I scrape my bowl, of course. So this is the second third of my flour mixture. Mix it in, scrape the bowl, add in the last part of my molasses and mix that in. As you can see, this dough is stiffening up pretty good. That's a good thing. It's okay. I'm going to add in the rest of my flour and mix it in again just until it's barely mixed in. So this is what my dough is looking like and you don't want to over mix this because it will make your cookies tough and we want nice soft cookies. So this is my beautiful dough and I'm going to divide it into four. It doesn't have to be a perfect four, but go ahead and divide that four ways. And then we're going to get a bit of plastic wrap Put one piece at a time, one of your fours, onto the plastic wrap, press it down into a disc that is about one inch thick, get all four of those done, and then put them into another container and into the refrigerator at least four hours and overnight if you have the time. The next thing that I'm doing is rolling out my gingerbread. I'm doing this on a lightly floured surface, and then I'm going to cut out my whole shapes. So this is my gingerbread house. And here is my little gingerbread man. And I happen to be doing five gingerbread men today. You can re-roll these scraps and cut them out again, but don't re-roll them more than once because again, you'll end up with a little bit of tough cookies. Here I am adding some detail to my little houses. So I cut some holes with my piping tip and then I'm going to fill those holes in with some crushed up Jolly Rancher candies. I have a green apple on one side and I'm going to put cherry on the other side. These are going to melt and give my little houses some really cute stained glass windows. The next thing that I'm going to do is put some little happy faces on my gingerbread men along with some little eyes. And I just want to add some details to my other houses as well. This one I'm going to give a little door and some windows and I'm also going to cut out that little middle section and put some of the stained glass in there as well. This is what they look like before they go into the oven. They're going in at 350 for nine minutes. And as you can see there too, I also baked some of those scraps because that way I have something to munch on while I'm decorating. This is what they look like when they first come out of the oven. I did let them cool for just a couple of minutes before I started picking them up, obviously. 
and I'm ready to decorate my first little house. I have it kind of propped up on my gingerbread man because this is two days later and the Jolly Rancher part will get a bit sticky and see where it is there. It'll kind of get ruined. So if you are going to do the stained glass, make sure that you plan on giving them out within a day. If not, don't do the little stained glass. Here I have some white fondant that I rolled out in cornstarch and I'm just using my detailed cookie cutter to cut a little bit of snow for the roof. You can do this freehand, but if you want all of your cookies to look alike, you're going to need to use a cutter. I'm going to put it on top of my cookie to dry just so that it dries at the correct angle to go onto the houses. While I have my white fondant out, I'm also going to cut the little fluffy part of the gingerbread man's hats as well as the little pom-pom that is going to go on the end of the hats. And I am cutting out five because I have five little gingerbread men. Here I'm using some royal icing to attach the snow onto each of my little gingerbread houses. And then I'm going to go over here and roll my red fondant and cut out the little hats for my gingerbread guys. I'm also going to attach them with some royal icing. You can also use water to attach the fondant to the fondant if you would like to. So here's what he looks like and now I just want to give him a few more little details. So I'm going to brush any of the excess cornstarch or whatever might have gotten on him and then I'm going to use just a little bit of water and a paintbrush to kind of get the fondant shiny and wet and then I'm going to add a little bit of glitter. This is edible glitter and I will leave a link down below in the description to where you can get it. I'm also going to brush some water onto my little snowy house rooftops and add a bit of glitter onto the top of them and then I'm going to add some details with these cute little light sprinkles that I found and I'll leave a link to those two down in the description so I have piped just a little green rope out of my royal icing which I dyed green and then I'm adding the teeny little twinkle lights on there and I don't want them to all face the same direction. I want them to look like they would look if I hung them outside when they definitely would not be all perfect and straight so that is why I'm making them just a bit crooked. I want to fill in that door detail just to bring it out a little bit and then I'm going to give them a cute little Christmas wreath here on their door because they are feeling very festive. I also have some teeny little berries and these are just ice cream sprinkles that I'm adding on here and I'm using my fancy chopstick here to kind of poke them into the places where I want them. Next I'm going to add some snow to the bottom of my little house so it looks like it's been snowing where they are. Just smudge that around a bit with a butter knife or whatever smudger you have handy. And then I want to add some little white crystal sprinkles on there. Again these are just like ice cream sprinkles you can find them anywhere. And here's my little house. I just need to clean it up, sweep the porch a little bit to get the excess snow off of it. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and do all of my little houses and all of my little men. I added some details, some candy canes in their hands and a gingerbread in one of their hands. I just used candy for the little buttons and the little eyes and all that and now I'm ready to pack them up. Usually I would put a bunch of plain cookies in the bottom and then one detailed one on top because generally I'm not going to send somebody 20 detailed cookies like that. I have my little Santa approved thing that I'm putting on top and these are ready to go. Hi again everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. As promised, I do have a little freebie for you. It is down in the description. There is an ebook for you courtesy of Country Hill Cottage. They have a fabulous YouTube channel. Make sure that you go and check them out and do download that ebook. It has some really cute printables for your holidays for you. And Merry Christmas everyone! Bestbikesforever.com Do you guys hear my cat?